Blog Talk Radio. Hello? Welcome to an episode of Talking Hell on Wheels. I'm your host, Kim K., all the way from Los Angeles, California. And I'm here with my main man, Yardley. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Kim K.? Uh, here in effect in Atlanta. I'm uh, very excited about tonight's show, man. What's going on, Kim? Oh, man, uh, it's been a little hectic, and we're just trying to get everything together. So if it's not as our normal... Uh, Stuff, please, you have to forgive us. We are trying to keep tail. <laughs> All right. So, uh, um, of course, it's a live show. You can call in with area at area code three four seven three two six nine five four one. Once again, that's area code three four seven three two six nine five four one. Please remember, you have to press one to be entered into the host queue. And once you do that, you will be, we will be able to see you, and we will be able to take your call. So um, also, too, please make sure that you enter our chat room. And you can enter our chat room by going to our Blood Talk Radio uh, webpage and scrolling down to the bottom of the screen, and there you will see our chat room, which will magically appear. And once it appears, you can uh, log in via Blog Talk Radio or Facebook. And if you do that, you will get a shout-out tonight. I see Ashley in the chat room. I see Country Cottage in the chat room. I see Debbie in the chat room. I see Robin in the chat room. I also see Teresa in the chat room. So please make sure you guys come in, and we will make sure that you are uh, recognized. So uh, this is a... This is a, a little different than we normally do. Uh, we're having a little technical issue, but we, we're trying to work through it to make sure that this will be the, the best show possible. But, um, um, Yardley, I know we have some shout-outs, so uh, who are we shouting out tonight? Uh, today, you know, the usual suspects, we're going to shout-out the Joseph Black Moon fan page, the Hell on Wheels, and then some Facebook group, the Hell on Wheels fan group, the AMC forums, and our great friends over at Total Nerd Takeover. And actually, everybody, um, our, our hashtag for tonight is going to be Black Moon Rising. So if you want to speak to us um, through Twitter, uh, we have Black Moon Rising set up in our tweet next. So if you have an on-the-fly comment or a question, you can always hit us up through Twitter at Talking Hell. All right. And... Uh also, too, we, we just want to thank the fans. I know you guys are really excited about the show we have for tonight. Uh, you know, so we want to thank Elizabeth uh, for helping set this up, as well as, of course, Melanie, our book, our talented booker. Uh, we want to thank her as well. And, uh, you know, just everybody that uh, has worked very hard to make this night uh, happen. Um, we're going to be joined by Fiona in a minute, uh, and she's going to do the uh, saloon chat, but, um, how, you know, before we get to the saloon chat, I just want to, um, to ask you, uh, Yardley, we've been doing this show now for, this is our 20th episode, I mean, did you ever think that, you know, uh, 20 episodes ago that the show would take off as well as it has? And we would, you know, it, it would just, you know, go to where it's gone. Uh, you know, absolutely not. Um, we were just two guys who were fans of the show. 
and we wanted to just break down episodes and just, you know, talk about the show and start up a, you know, a quick little, um, you know, Facebook page. And uh, we just wanted to get some of the community of people who we already knew were interested in the show and thought that it was good. And, uh, you know, the day that we were doing, and I think it was the, uh, was it the, um, the Eminent Domain episode, and I think it might have been the episode after that where um, Anson and, um, and Neil, uh, Neil called in. And that was pretty cool, you know, because, you know, it caught us off guard. Uh, it was spontaneous. Uh, we definitely got a kick out of it, and the listeners got a kick out of it. But it seemed like after that day, uh, we've been so fortunate, um, especially with the addition of Melanie, of, you know, getting so many of these actors on and actually letting the fans uh, that love the TV show get an opportunity to uh, talk to the people, um, you know, basically talk to the actors, uh, ask them about their characters, but also to get uh, a little bit more personal, uh, you know, into these people who we like that play these characters. And it's been a fun ride. Uh, I never expected it, but I guess when you kind of give a lot, you know, of your own to a TV show, uh, when the actors come on and give back, uh, that makes the experience even better. Yeah. So, I mean, thank all the groups that that helped us, you know, get going. You know, we talked about them a little bit in the beginning. The cast has been awesome. I mean, you know, it's just been a, a great ride. And, you know, I don't want to sound like it's coming to an end or anything like that, but, you know, I think it's just a, a great beginning to what what it is that we're trying to accomplish here, which is, you know, entertain the fans and, and, and put a good forum out there for our listeners. So, um, you know, with all that said, uh, we're we're waiting for Fiona to come in the um, come online and and while we do while we're waiting on Fiona, uh, Melanie, are you there? I sure am. Yeah. So now tonight you're gonna. Keep us uh, on tap with what the fans are talking about in the chat room. Sure. All right. So, uh, what do you what do you want from them as far as contributing to the show tonight? What was that? What do you want? What are you looking for? What's going to get you to uh, to you know to us? I mean, what, what kind of content you're looking for the fans to uh, to get? Uh, just, you know, sharing their feelings about Eddie, and, you know, if y'all have any questions, just let me know. I'll be in the ANC uh, chat forum and the chatterbox of our own in the Indie Showcase, and just point them my way, and I'll make sure that they get in. Okay. All right. So, you know, so what we'll do is, uh, since we were... We're waiting for um, Fiona, and uh, I think she's having some uh, technical difficulties. Um, hello, Fiona? Okay. All right, so since we're, we're going to wait a little bit more to give her an opportunity to get settled in, but um, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the Joseph Black Moon character, uh, Yardley. Um, when you first, when he was first introduced into the show, what was your, what did you think about the character? I think when he was first introduced into the show, because um, one of the things that actually drew me down on wheels uh, was the fact that. Um, Common was going to be one of the main characters in it, uh, and any time, you know, especially in a Western, uh, you don't get many, you know, necessarily black characters uh, in there. Uh, I kind of enjoyed it because whenever you're getting different cultures involved, you know, in a show like this, it's, it's always better to show diversity, which is, you know, one of the things that uh, has always, you know, pretty much been around, uh, you know, in this country, not necessarily represented. But when you have um, black characters and Native American representation, uh, that was definitely a draw for me. Um, 
uh, one of the things that I, I think, uh, as far as Joseph Black Moon's character is concerned, you know, I, I'm one of those people. I kind of like, you know, uh, you know how I mean you are with, um, you know, with Tyrese on The Walking Dead. You know, we like measured characters, but we also like for characters at some point to kind of reach a breaking point and kind of, you know, make that turn into possibly, you know, mm-hmm. just being, yeah, you know, just being a little bit more. Uh, I don't necessarily want to say aggressive, but just a little bit more assertive. And uh, I kind of wish the writers would have made Joseph's character, you know, just a little bit more. Cause there were times where he was treated certain ways, and I was like, Joseph just smacked, you know, <laughs> just, just smacked the dude. It was like when he was like, oh, it was like when he was like, out in hell on wheels, he was like witnessing people with the Bible, and, you know, they were like running into him. And I just wanted him to snap, kind of like Ruth did when she wanted Elam to go get Cullen, you know. And I was just waiting for that, really, that, that snap moment, and uh, we never got that. But overall, you know, in, any diverse representation on the show, I'm game. And we have her. Hey, how you doing, Fiona? Hi. Can you hear me? Hey. Yes, I hear you really good. So tell us who you are okay. and uh, the, the name of the, the group that you represent. Um, I'm Fiona, and I'm re- representing the Joseph Black Moon Facebook page. All right, cool. So what do you have for us in the saloon segment? Well, I just wanted to thank you guys for all the great work you've been doing. And I want to just tell you that if you want to take the rest of the night off, I uh, <laughs> can take the show for you. <laughs> yeah, we- yeah, we bet. I bet you could. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, um, so I guess you want to hear what we're talking about on our page the last few days. Um, mostly questions like, what time is the podcast on in Paris or Copenhagen? Lots of times phoning in and listening right now, I think, all over the world, actually. So... Um, but mostly we're talking about the same things that all the pages are talking about, and that's what happened to Elam in the finale and how that could impact the Native story. Um, I know all the fan pages are talking about uh, is, is he dead or is he alive, and you know everyone wants Elam to survive the bear attack. And um, I know I've been, even been reading on your page, um, on the forum and on um, up page, that um, everyone thinks he's alive, and that they're hoping that the native guy that got away is going to go get help and come back and save you. And uh, this is hopefully also <laughs> a segue to mm-hmm. you bring back Joseph. That's what some of the fans are hoping. Um, I think, um, I don't know if anyone who is in the know is out there listening, but I, I want to know and some fans want to know if those native guys that Elam was fighting with, if they are Cheyenne, because Joseph is Cheyenne and that could be a connection to him. Because as you know, oh, he's okay. so... He's, he's, he's a son of a chief, right? Um, yeah. To the Cheyenne. And if if his father, Chief Many Horses, you know, has, is not alive anymore, we don't know what happened to him, and he could be chief right now. And if those, um, if those guys are Cheyenne, they could go and summon help if, if he's the chief and bring him back into the story that way. And rescue Elam, you know. Joseph re- rescued Lily, so this is a common, common, you know, thread of thought um, among fans. So that's one possibility. Um, some people, some people think that you know Elam might be dead. And another way that uh, Joseph could come back is to be a traitor and be trading with the Mormons and somehow, somehow see Colin's predicament and get involved in hopefully helping Colin escape. So that's one train of thought. 
Um, as far as the rest of the finale, I think we're very similar in our discourse about about all the other issues, about Helen and Naomi, um, you know, staying to the harvest, but then somehow getting back to hell on wheels um, and redeeming the story of the railroad that way. But uh, the other thing that I ask the fans uh, is, uh, why do we want Joseph back? Why is he so um, important and why is he so popular? And I think there's a lot of reasons, but mainly because uh, the railroad had such a huge impact on Native American history, probably um, only second to uh, initial European contact on the continent. And so because this is really, like, it really resonates um, in terms of American history and North and Native history, um, they really want to have a seat at the table that is hell on wheels. They really want their story to be told. And um, Joseph is a very sympathetic character that they can view the perspective of that time in history through, through his eyes. I mean, here's a guy who, who um, is curious and he has embraced the Bible in all its beauty and he believes in it, and then, and then he um, struggles to see it in the, in the people he's meeting, which is a contradiction between the Bible and what he's experiencing in this community. But he's trying to build bridges anyway. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if he succeeds. The point is that he's trying. And this is important. Uh, this view is important. It has to be told because really this is Native history. Um, so it's really important to people that Joseph be the contact, contact for that story. But anyway, I think hopefully Eddie can speak better to those issues. Okay. You know that? Well, uh, oh, yeah. You know what? You know what? Uh, I know you're going to call in, and I'm sure you have a, a questions for, for Mr. Spears. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so sure too. Go. So when we uh, when we start yeah. taking calls, we'll make sure we, you you're the first one in there, okay? Okay, thanks, guys. All right. So thank you so much, and once again, say the name of your group. Joseph Blackman. Joseph Blackman fans on Facebook. All right. Thank you so much, Fiona. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, so here we go. Uh, our guest, you know him as Joseph Black Moon on Hell on Wheels. It's the one, the only, Eddie Spears. How you doing, man? No, I'm good. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm very, uh, very, what's up? very excited. What's up, guys? <laughs> You know what? We need to change the hashtag to "All Hell Is Breaking Loose." Thank you so much, Eddie, for coming on. Yeah, and thank oh, you for I'm hanging. Very honored, man. You know, I'm, I'm very honored to be part of the the Hell and Weiss Wheel family. You know, and uh, you know, as John Wirth said in the other podcast, you know, Joseph's not dead, so he's oh, yeah. you know, he's he's still relevant. You know, but I'm. I'm very, very proud of everybody. You know, I'd like to give a shout out to Anton Mount, tell him he's kicking butt on the show, to Colin Meany, you know, my, my good mate Phil Burke, and to Common, to Chris Hyredale and Kasha, uh, to Robin McCleavy, Don Norwood, Dan Esler, you know, Damien O'Hare, one of the newcomers to the show. I you know, he was he was great to great to watch. You know, because I as an actor's point of view, I kinda I don't always watch my own stuff, you know. And especially being a part of being a part of a series like this, I didn't want to be influenced by anybody's performance, and I kind of was just so head deep into Joseph's story that I that I don't really stray off into any of the other stories. And so, so getting to watch season three, if I'm gonna sit back and, and take a chair and just watch the show for you know for its beautiful writing and the cinematography, that like, come on, Marvin Rush, he's amazing, man. He's got such a good eye, you know. And to sit back and watch the show from from the audience point of view, 
it was something new to me, and it just made me even more proud to be a part of this, the, you know, the AMC Hell and Wheels family. Was there was there a point during season three where you were like, oh, Joseph would have kicked that person's ass? You know, yeah. <laughs> right the... uh, Joseph would have came to the rescue right there. That that pair would have had no chance. No, you know, or there's different things, you know, where I think that, you know, it's missing a little bit of Joseph, but you know, everybody. It kept me on my edge, man. The writing was top notch, you know, with Mark Richard and, and John Worth, man, they're they're, they're top notch in what they do and Jamie. You know, you know, it's uh, all the producers, you know, I'd like to say hello and give a shout out to all of them. You know. Now, now uh I don't know, we've been uh, championing you. Uh especially on, on the the part of um Ruth, every time Ruth looks like she's about to take a, a new uh, uh, boyfriend or whatever, we're like, uh-uh, hell no, that, that's Joseph. <laughs> you know, watch out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we even we even told John, uh, we're just like, uh-uh, nah, man, it ain't, it ain't going down like that. <laughs> so, uh, well, thanks for having me back. back. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> So, so also, too, one of the things we wanted to also talk about is we know you do a lot of work within your community and stuff, and uh, I know that um, uh, Yardley he made a post recently, and uh, this is definitely a question we wanted you to ask, to answer. Uh, I'm going to let Yardley go ahead and, and talk about the post you made. Oh, uh, the, oh uh, well, uh, to kind of sum up the post, if it's the one that I was thinking of, now, with your career and you were doing the show, um, you were in the show for two seasons, um, you know, with the movement of fans that wanted you back, uh, one of the questions that I had posed was, uh, you know, like what would the fans' attitude be if you decided that, you know, a life mentoring and community service meant more to you, you know, than acting? But I guess uh, thinking, you know, is there a balance to doing that or is acting something that's always going to be in your blood or – did you uh, expect to expand your role in the community? You know, I think the gift that God gave me was the gift of being a storyteller. Let that be through my native way, through song, dance, um, and through acting. And when it came into wanting to help my community and help the youth and to give back to the people that have supported me so much, was that entertainment was a great vehicle to create awareness to the youth because but even in the, the most desolate of reservations or desolate of, of, of poverty-stricken communities, you know, people are media-fed a lot. You know? And coming from, from Lower Rural Reservation in South Dakota and the struggle it was to get into film and to even get to auditions and even to, to break through the barrier, you know, and to try to get into Hollywood to be an actor, you know, was a tough road, you know, and... Mm-hmm. And using media to create that awareness, no matter what it, what it may be, you know, it would be a message I would love to share to any youth. You know, if you, that anything in life and the stuff you strive for is an instant gratification all the time. And if you surround yourself with good people and keep fighting for what you believe in, then, you know, you eventually you'll come out on top. But you can't give up. You know, if I, if I would have gave up a long time ago about, you know, about not cutting my hair, that's one of the other big things that, that was a big part for me in Hell on Wheels. I've had long hair my whole life, and I'm a very uh, traditional person. And I, I'm Sitongu Lakota from Lord Brule. And I didn't believe in cutting my hair for a lot of times. I would, I would say, well, I'm an actor. I can, you know, I can play any role with my hair. It doesn't matter. But I was so committed to Joseph and committed to, to his story and what he was doing and committed to my career that that was a big life choice for me. For the first time in my, in my whole life I had short hair, and it was different, you know. <laughs> But oh, I, man. there's things like that that I was really committed to, you know, to being to being in Joseph's story out and to and to showing youth and kids that if you are committed to something, it doesn't matter, you know, how your hair looks or how your things are. It just matters who you believe and who you are in your heart. You carry that with you and you can go all over the world. Now, now welcome to the club because both me and Yardley, we have short hair. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, or, or no hair. hair. <laughs> No hair, right? So uh, you know, you're a young guy. So at some point, you might have to, uh, you know, get rid of it all, or just be all grayed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh man. So, and, and 
And Eddie, um, you know, well, when it comes to acting and, and Native American um, representation in it, do you feel like there are more Native American youth uh, who are involved in the craft now as opposed to when you first got started? Oh, yes. You know, I think uh, there's a lot more Natives playing Natives nowadays, and I'm, I'm very happy for that. But, you know, I did my first movie the summer of fourth grade, and it was a TNT movie called Geronimo. And uh, hmm. it came out my fifth grade year, and they showed it to my entire elementary school. And I'd never been so embarrassed in my life, man. That was people, you know, and they got the whole entire school in the gymnasium. I'm in this little city of Aberdeen, South Dakota, and, you know, and it was kind of a big thing to them. And I didn't really didn't like the attention it brought at first. But when we started doing different projects, more and more projects, it was kind of like we were... It was seeing a lot of the same cast. Well, I'm gonna play. You're my brother this time, or you're, you know, you're my cousin, or you're playing my dad this time, or you know. And more and more, it was booking jobs. And later on in my career, you know, it was definitely see a lot more new faces, a lot of new talents out there. And I encourage them, you know, all the native youth to keep trying. There's there's a lot more doors out there that the entertainment can open, and, and you know, a lot of beautiful stories that can be told because there is over 530 some recognized. Native tribes out there that you know they, we all kind of get thrown into a, a melting pot, if you will, and, it, and there's a lot of stories to be told. Even, if, but that's not the thing besides the entertainment business. You know, you, for the youth, you know, they can do whatever they want. They can be director or do the animation or do music or hair and makeup or you know. So I encourage them to do whatever they, whatever their little heart desires. You know, that's what I did, and I'm, and I'm very thankful. The people out there, and I'd like to send a big shout out to my fans for your chance. You know, everybody that's been supporting me through my whole career and through all the hell, hell on wheels, man. I encourage everybody to keep watching. You know, this is a, it's a great show, and um, you know, and I encourage all the youth to to strive to be part of something. You know, this was one of my biggest dreams ever to get hired on Hell on Wheels, man. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you know, with, with um, what I would like to see too is, you know, and definitely being African American, I like to see more more uh, movies where, you know, it's not, it doesn't matter that the person is Native American or black, they just, you know, they just in the movie, you know what I mean? And it's not, yeah. it doesn't, you know, when we get past, you know, all that, like, you know, just be in a, uh, you know, an action movie where you just a dude who happens to be Native yeah, American, an action instead of, you know, you know. Well, for me, having to run around one car going around, you know. So I, I really respect the, the work that you do, and also too, the thing I like about about the stuff you're doing is that you can tell you have a lot of pride in your culture and stuff. That you you don't you don't take any. It doesn't seem like you take like any roles that you'd be disgraced. You know, it's like you could go back to the reservation. You know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you like, know, because like that kind of stuff. Well, I've, of all the different tribes I have portrayed, you know, I always do my best to to have an Aboriginal advisor um, to portray them the the best I can, you know, because it's it's inspiring to me too. I learned stuff that I didn't know about other tribes, and about other the ways they they believe in their customs, and it makes sense to me, and it helps me with the storyline and my character. You know, and that's one of the things that I really loved about Hell on Wheels. That they were they were open to even, even though I wasn't Cheyenne, we still did our research into the Cheyenne and, and the way they were dressed from the regalia, the, the way they, the certain language, the way they set up their camp, you know, all, these, all this different stuff, and they were open to it, you know, because there were times I would come and they would, well, this is what you think you might wear, and this and this, and then they'd, they'd just digest it and cut it out with the team, you know, and uh, they come out with, with the end product, but it was, um, I was so glad that they were so so open, you know, and then unbiased about who Joseph was and who this this character is, you know. Oh man, well, well Eddie, you know, how does it make you feel to know that there's a movement among fans of Joseph Black Moon and yourself to have been brought back on Hell on Wheels? Because I, I can tell you, it is like a tidal wave bubbling under the earth <laughs> to get your character back on the show. Uh, do, do you have any idea how much um, uh, the Joseph Black Moon fan base is behind you? Um, I do have an idea, but it's, it's, it's opening my eyes more and more every day. You know, because um, yeah, I'm very thankful to all my fans. I love you all. You know, it's been a great support. You know, it was uh, also a hard couple of years while I was doing 
uh, Hell on Wheels. My my father got ill and passed away during season two, and I can never thank my fans enough for the love and the support that they gave me during those hard times. And um, and so I would just. So that's just as basic as I can put it. Is I love you all, and I thank you so much for your support. Now, now that tidal wave of fan support. Let's just be let's be honest. Eighty nine percent of them is women. So <laughs> you, know, the really like it, you know, we don't keep it real. <laughs> the ladies really like you, bro. Like like hey, we, um, actually. That there was a fan who actually thought that our email address was your personal email address. And, uh, and and let's let's just say that I tried my best to piece a question out of what she wrote. <laughs> so, so so later on when we get the emails, I'll kind of paraphrase and uh, I, you know I can't read it. Yeah. But she likes you a lot. <laughs> well, I think my fans. You know, a lot of my fans are they're really enthusiastic. You know, and uh, yeah, you make. Now, look, we two dudes, we love the show and all that, you know, and, we, you know, we're not haters, but uh, mm-hmm. we do we do become invisible in the presence of uh, Eddie Spears. I know. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good, though. <laughs> you know, so we like, hey, yeah, we, we was telling the women, like, hey, we're going to be on the show, too, though. <laughs> well, yeah, man. It's, you know, we're t- so you know, yeah, 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 yeah. it's all good. Though. So, uh, well, thank you, ladies. Now, you know, I thank you for all your support. You know, it's uh, I'll just yeah. keep trying to do my best. Get back in. Uh, you know, I, as far as all my fans, you know, I've lately I've been uh, I've done some um, taking a lot of personal time for uh, you know learning my native culture more and my heritage. And I've been out uh, doing things in that nature, having ceremony and, and traveling with different elders and family members and things like that. And so I haven't been around technology a lot, you know. And so that's I haven't been following a lot sometimes. And I and I hone in on the sites when I when I can and I get back in. And that's why I like to send a big shout out to Elizabeth, you know, my friend and an online publicist. She's you know, and Jenny Sachs. She's they're my my backbones, you know, through this all and. Uh, and so if there's any, you know, my fans out there that feel like I haven't been responding to them or, or, or giving them any attention or love, that's not my intention at all. You know, I just, uh, I'm doing some things that I respectfully need to get done as a man in my life. And, and um, now it's time to move on, you know, and I, there's hopefully a lot more main projects. And, uh, and it's even better to know that this fan base is behind me and that you guys are behind me, man. You know, this is a, this is a cool thing to be on a on talk show. Now, now, um, you know me and me and Yarley, the two brothers, right? So if if we, you know, went and had a chance to kick it with the elders and you know go to the reservation, what are some things you think we could, you know, as men, get out of that that could help us going forward? I think that it would, everybody would come for their own reasons. You know, it's up to. Mm-hmm. It's up to you or up to a man what he wants in his life, and and if it was coming to have, uh, you know, to be connected more spiritually, or you know, mm-hmm. you can be, anybody can come pray. You don't have to be to be white or black or red. It doesn't matter. It's all matters is that you're you're there not as a spectator, that you're there to to pray, and that you're there to uh, to be a part of it and be be a part of us as a community, as a human being. You know, and that's one thing I. I, you know, that means personally that I kind of battle with sometimes because people say, well, you're, what are you, you're Indian, you're Native American, or you're, or, you know, what are you, well, what happened to being a human being, you know, because all the words didn't even exist in our hemisphere, you know, 200 years ago, nobody called us that, people get so conflicted on what, on what they want to be called, and, um, and as I think it just breaks down the simple as that is we all are human beings you know and we all come from different walks of life and uh, what, what we do with it and, and you know and honoring our family is up to us as men so okay uh, so you know, I'm at the, uh, get down the reservation kick it you know because I know I got some natives somewhere in the family tree too so you know mm-hmm. them ancestors you know I can reach out to them and all that now now we we brought you on the show, and 
before we, you know, turn the callers out, you know, on you. Trust me, we'll we'll try to keep them at bay as much as much as we can. <laughs> That's right, I mean. But uh, we got we got to talk in, in a little in depth into uh, Hell on Wheels, and um, just how much did you have input in like shaping the character of Joseph Black Moon in the beginning, starting it out? Um, you know. He, as an actor, you kind of do your own personal shaping yourself, you know, your own backstory of where he come from and what he was doing because he, as far as, you know, as getting to pick his wardrobe and pick who he is and where and the way he dressed, that, that was pretty much all me. But he was already written as, the, you know, as the chief's son. And so I took that into account, um, that he was Cheyenne and that he was, you know, adopted into this, into this white family and this, you know, and the Reverend was adopted him and would take him in as a family member and treat him as his own son. And you take that all into account, you know, and then, and then you build from there once, once you get more and more backstory. And that's kind of how Joseph evolved, you know. And then this, the part where, you know, I was wanting to cut my hair was well, during a scene it was something that I had requested, you know, that I could... Because that was a, that was really a big part in my own life, you know, and then to be able to get that on, on film was something that I thought would be, you know, a great piece for, for Hell on Wheels. But, you know, it's been throughout season one and season two with Joseph, he was kind of all over the place sometimes, you know. He got confused a lot, you know. He went, he went through a lot of a lot of trials and tribulations about being who he is, you know, because he's an extra line to chief, but then he, he wanted to be the next pastor in town, and he's dealing with racism, and and a crazy brother that's running around wrecking everything that he's trying to mend, you know, and so he's so blocked. You know what's cool about your character? Your character had two really great actors playing your pops. You had your, the character's biological father, played by West uh, Studi, and you had uh, Tom Noonan, who played your spiritual father as well. I mean, two fantastic actors who who uh been in the business for quite a long time. What was it like working with those two actors? Oh, man. You know, I've uh, I've always looked up. Wes has been one of my mentors my whole life, you know, and I got the honor to meet Wes on The Dance of the Wolves. My, my brother Michael had a part in that movie, and, and that's when we first met Wes, and I was the first grader, second grader, and he would come over to the house, and him and my father became friends. So every time I would do a project with Wes, you know, my father would come out and they were, you know, they were inseparable buddies. And so I, you know, I grew up around Wes and he's been one of my great mentors. And so to have him play my father, it just felt natural. Like he, he was already a father figure to me, you know. And, oh, when cool. it, and to work with Tom Newman, like, come on, man. Like, how much my family is making me nervous sometimes. They're like, did you get to work with Tom Newman? Like, his first movie was nothing. You're just there just going off, you know. And I'm like... Oh, Tom Noonan, I'm going to hack it out every day with Tom Noonan. And honestly, that's the first question that a lot of other actors ask me when, I, when it comes to working on Hell on Wheels. They're trying to hear the show, and like, what the hell was it like to work with Tom Noonan? <laughs> he's Tom, man. He's a big presence, and, and he, he's very professional. And sometimes you be sitting there watching him and calling me, and you go at it, and you forget you're in the scene, you know? You're like, oh, man, these guys... I'm in the scene too, you know. You're just watching the movie. You're already watching the series, you know. It's just amazing, yeah, and, you, and you learn, scary. you learn, learn so much, you know, working with them, watching, watching their process, and watching how they do things. And it's and Tom was always so supportive all the time, you know. Because at first I come, well, I'm gonna try this piece cake or try this. I'm gonna do this. Do what you want. Yeah, of course I got you back, you know. And or something technical would go wrong, and he would act like a father, so he would be the father figure, you know, and he'd be like, oh, come on, guys, you know, look at what my son's doing here, man, he's doing great bit, and you guys are, you know, he's always had my back, so it was, it was nothing but comfort, man, when I was working with him, guys. A little nerve-wracking sometimes, you know, because it's, they're, they're heavy-hitting factors, you know, and, and it was such a an experience, man, I learned so much by working with him. Oh man, that's some that's some good stuff. And you know, one of the things um, we kind of want, I want to kind of bring it back um, to your character of Joseph and and Ruth. Um, you know, I don't really feel like we got enough of um, the story between you guys. It seems like there was a lot of stuff that was potentially missing, 
or possibly edit it out. Um, do you remember any scenes that you guys did um, that were left out um, in the versions that uh, we as fans saw on television? No, there was nothing cut out, but, you know, we kind of felt that, too, that some stuff was left unaddressed, you know, and how uh, how and how we we came to be lovers, you know. But, you know, there wasn't anything that that, that that edited out, though, as far as the story goes, you know. Oh, okay, okay. Um, no. Okay, well, well, actually, well, I'll tell you what. I don't think there was. was. As far as, uh, no. <laughs> Well, we thought that Kasha, she was basically saying that, um, you know, for the most part, uh, she couldn't remember uh, much that was cut out. Pretty much you guys, you know, got it, you know, got it right, you know, the way that they had it. So she said that she couldn't remember, but I figured that I'd ask you as well. Um, how was it working with Kasha? Because she speaks so highly of you when she's on our show. Oh, she's brilliant. She's uh it's like a little life force, a little light, you know, when you come on set when, you, when somebody is around and they just have that presence and that that, that life force that just kind of like makes you feel good and, and, and very professional. And then and she turns it on, you know, and turns into turns into Ruth, and it's a totally different, you know, totally different person the way from the way she talks to everything. And she's a brilliant actress, you know, very beautiful and very it was amazing to work with. And she wasn't afraid to. Uh, she got it out to do, you know, and she rehearsed on her days off and to really get these scenes to our full potential because there wasn't a lot of that story, you know, and a lot of different stuff. So we would take time to kind of create our own, you know, different times. Well, why would we do this? And how come I'm saying that? And, you know, and different things like that. So I miss it. You know, it's uh, it's something you, you do for a couple years and then, you know, I'm off doing other projects, you know, working my way towards other projects now. But they're working with Kasha is uh brilliant and it's uh, I missed it. <laughs> and she's oh, easy on <laughs> she, She's so sweet. Yeah. Yes she is. Alright, so we we have a ton of callers. Uh we're probably gonna break break records. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, you, should, you should feel really I mean great. I mean we've had just about everybody from the show this is the most anticipated of any guests that we've had on the show. And, you know, I just want you to know that, that that's how much people love you, man. So, Oh, man. Well, it's right. good to, to hear that, man. Well, that's All, right, All right. So, uh, actually, we're going to play uh, a voicemail first. Uh, we okay. have a couple of voicemails, and we want to get those in. So here's the first one. Hi, Eddie. This is uh, Sweet Tooth from the Helen Wheels Forum, and I wanted to let you know that Joseph and Ruth are my two favorite characters and couple. Uh, my question for you would be, uh, what circumstances do you think would bring him back into contact with the people of Helen Wheels, considering that he is no longer a Christian or a warrior? Well, I think, you know, the, what would bring him back into the Helen Wheels, that's part of other situations as... Like maybe he, you know, he's a traitor that's out, you know, doing his own thing, finding himself, and he ends up saving or rescuing, you know, Anson's character, you know, Bohannon during from the Mormons or from something from another, or coming, having to get help from Judge Joseph now that he's, you know, now that he's chief, or maybe he's not chief, maybe he's still, you know, battling with that. But he has, he has to come. The Helen Wheel community has to come ask. Joseph for help against all the different Indian stuff that's going on, or maybe Ruth goes and searches him out and, and, and wants to create that life with him. Or you know, a lot of different things that I think of that bring Joseph back into the show. Um, or you know, that could have been uh, Joseph's bear that it's got coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, they need so, you know, that's you know that. Sending all my warriors out to attack them. Who knows? You know. <laughs> all right, we, we have a couple of more voicemails. Let's get, let's get these in real quick. Uh, this all is Hans right. Hello. Hello. This is a question for Eddie Spears in the podcast. Um, buenas noches, Eddie. My name is Consuelo, and I am calling from Spain, in Europe. Thanks for being here with us. I would like to ask you about Joseph. He's a churchman, but he's also a warrior. Which side of the character do you like the most? Or which side of the character is more challenging for you as an actor? 
Thank you very much. And excuse my English. Un beso desde España. Bye. Okay. So you like um, being a warrior? I, 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 like being a warrior or the Christian? I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, personally, I, mean, I like being the warrior. And it was, you know, um, as a personal choice as an actor, that's, you know, I like the warrior side of it. And he finally gets to let loose some of his anger and, and come out and go to the battle scene. Those are always just fun to shoot as being an actor. But, but being, you know, playing the Christian side, you know, and it was a fun challenge to go back and forth and to have that conflict between him was kind of the the fun challenge about being Joseph. You know, he, um, I didn't really feel one way or the other about it, but if I, if I had to pick as an actor's decision, you know, I, I, you know, I'd like to pick the warrior side of it. You know? Okay, but so he, yeah, hey, look, I'd rather be the warrior too, but you know, I'm crazy though. <laughs> All right, here's our first caller. Uh, caller, area code 917. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, hi. Uh, you got a lot of problems. That's all I gotta say. I swear to God, you better. You got a lot of answering questions, and a lot of questions need answering. I swear to God. I love you so much. I miss you. I miss you. You stack of awesome. <laughs> Without your mayor, buddy, I'll I'll, I'll come to our vote for you. Dude, I'm uh, loving this your last too, man. Totally. Dude, I, I fucking love you, brother. I miss you, man. All right, I quite. I, I mean, listen. I don't know. We'll, we'll have more of a conversation when uh, we can talk sort of more privately. But uh, just want to let you know that uh, as far as the campaign to get uh, to get Joseph back on, it is being spearheaded by your uh, your Irish engine brother. <laughs> All right, man. It's and here, it, brother. It is being it is being talked about ad nauseum. Let me know that. Let you know that, bro. And uh, yeah, man. Uh, if it wasn't the same without you this year, bro. I gotta tell you that much. And uh, you know, we all miss you. We all love you. And um, so great listening and hearing your voice. And uh, oh, it's awesome. Anyways, boys, how you doing? Uh, JP, the fellas, how you, how you guys making out? You alright? Oh, yeah, great, man. Uh, actually. No, there's no need to do it privately. Uh, on air is more than fine for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, radio. I will. I will say that I uh, give Tito and Timmy a fucking call. Um, uh, they need. They need. They need to hear you, buddy. And uh, anyways, man, just kiss you. I love you, bro. Give me uh, like you know. <laughs> there's a couple of stories that are, are best left not on air. We just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother, man. I'll give you a call. That's just a how are you getting on, though? Everything good? Yeah, man, everything's good, brother. Everything's good. All right, man. Well, uh, I just wanted to call in and uh, see this is the only way I can get in contact with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do on the show. We, we, you well, know, listen, we, we listen, listen. Cast me. That, this is the whole thing, and, it, and, you know, it's tough having all these Irish engine meetings, you know, every second Wednesday of the month, and I'm the only Irish engine showing up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I won't keep everybody, but uh, I just want to tell you, I love you, man, and, uh, you know, we're definitely going to see you soon, and, uh, you know, uh, thanks again, fellas, and thanks for putting me through, and I uh, uh, hope you guys are all right, and uh, i got to go watch the uh, the end of the Leaf game. All right, <laughs> all right, all right, all right Phil, thanks for calling, bro. All right, guys, we'll talk right. to you soon. Well, all right, and if, if anybody wanted to know who that was, if you didn't realize, that's Phil Berg who plays Mickey McGinnis on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's one of my best mates, man. This is, this is my good yeah, he, he talked about you so lovingly on the show that, that he was on. So, yeah, that was pretty cool, man. Hey, uh, you have to listen to our interview with Phil. Um, we're going to send you the link to it if you haven't already listened to it. Uh, he spoke your praises yeah. on there as well. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude is funny, man. He made my face hurt. I'm laughing. <laughs> he is like, man, he's a big spirit, and I miss being around him too. Just the whole cast, the crew, the family up there was very tight knit. You know, everybody, even after work, everybody hung out, kicked it. You know, we had barbecues at Phil's house every Saturday, and oh man, it was 
Thank you for the time. All right, here, here we go. Here's our our next caller, area code three three six. What's your name? Where are you calling from? <laughs> hey, it's um, it's a uh, country college. Kind of like I'm stumbling, so nervous. <laughs> hi, it's uh, Sarah, um, country college um, from the forum. Uh, hi, hi, Eddie. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Hi, Kentane Yardley. <laughs> Oh, she remembered our names with Eddie on the line. <laughs> I did. I remembered you guys. <laughs> uh, she's she's oh. a, a big supporter of you and, and our show as well. All right, so what, what do you have for Eddie? All right, well, I just want to just uh, say a couple words, and then I have a few quick questions. Um, so um, I was out hiking recently with a good friend, um, and he asked me if uh, you, Eddie Renford, the mayor of New York City, would I vote for you? And I think that person was joking, but I was like, heck yeah, I will. Um, and you are that awesome and adored. And, um, you know, lots of people, not just, you know, Team Joseph, that's what we call ourselves on the forum. Um, we want to see you come back to Helen Wills with a bigger role. And uh, we were really missing you. And uh, you gave your character that special kind of magic um, in the every world screen. And props to you for being accomplished at your craft. And I know oh, how thank involved you. you are. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah, and I, I admire how involved you are with your, your charities and helping out your people. Um, and uh, JGM is, you know, my favorite character in television history ever. And, and I actually really don't watch TV. Um, but I heard All you right. on the show. <laughs> and I was like, I'm watching the show. Here's the song. And, uh, and I, I, I enjoyed every second, you know, of, of the show. And, and you, of course. Um, but I'll, I'll quit rambling and get to my questions. Um, so uh, in season three, um, Ruth finds out she miscarried Joseph's baby. Um, what was your reaction to this, and uh, how do you think Joseph would have handled the news? I was like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, my, my palms started sweating instantly when I watched that. No, I'm just kidding. But I... No, I I think Joseph would have been warm and opening, to, to, you know, to being a father, you know. Mm-hmm. He probably would have, uh, you know, had a couple moments of caution and a couple moments of freaking out and not knowing what to do and this and that, but eventually would have came to, uh, you know, came to terms with it, I hope. Oh. <clears throat> and, uh... My second question is in season two, um, Sean McGinnis starts acting creepy toward Ruth, and um, Joseph Blackman seems to be cognizant of what's going on. Um, you know, so how would you think your character would have handled finding out about Sean's powerful actions toward the woman he loved? Um, that's why I would end it in bloody mouth or something. No, <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I think, uh, I think that maybe that might have been Joseph's. Stopping point, you know, because he never really got to, he took a lot of guff, you know, from getting pushed around in the streets to uh, people mm-hmm. coming in his church talking down to him, you know, and he never really got to, he got to pop off and, you know, and let, let any of that out in the town. And maybe that would have been the breaking point, you know, where once you see seen, seen another man trying to get on the, on the woman he loves and and knowing, you know, maybe knowing she was pregnant, I don't know if that would be part of it. But, but either way, I think that would have, uh, Joseph would have been scrapping. Oh, that's, right. well, that's, no. that's good. <laughs> and I got a honey and on Joseph winning that battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, oh, Joseph just would, have, just would have stole her and headed out with her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Oh. So you got your questions in, Sarah? I did. I'm I'm kind of gushing right here. I'm just so sorry. Well, I thank awesome. you for your support, you know, and yeah, and for all the backing and the, for uh, you know a lot of hard work. But I I thank you and I encourage you to keep watching the show and um, and all that. So I thank you for calling in. Yeah, yeah. And th- thank you for being so awesome, and um, and I, I I hope the world for you. I really do. No, thank you. Oh, Aww. Well, have a good evening, everybody. All right, you thank you for calling. All right, bye, Eddie. <laughs> bye. All right, uh, next caller, area code two four eight. What's your name and where are you calling from? Um, hi, I'm I'm Chloe, and I'm calling from Michigan. Hey, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. 
Hi. Um, first of all, I would just like to say that you, Eddie, have been such an inspiration to me in many, many ways. Um, I write and blog about kind of a modern-day Western. And observing your roles as Joseph Black Moon, Black Cloud, and Shane Chasing Horse and Dreamkeeper, along with many others, has influenced me in shaping a particular character of mine, so thank you for that. And also, I so admire your dedication and pride for your Lakota heritage. You really are a role model that really anyone who wishes to grow closer to their own cultural roots can look up to, and that's really a wonderful thing. Oh, thank you for them warm words. That means a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, I just have two questions. The first is just, well, I have some Ojibwe roots, but other than that, I really would not be considered Native American or Indian. However, mm -hmm. to find myself have, I, I find myself having a genuine appreciation, respect, and interest in the culture for uh, various nations. So what would be your advice for a person like me who's kind of on, on the outside looking in, or so to speak, and, um, and would like to learn about uh, Native American nations? I think that's just you're already on your way. Just wanting and taking that acceptance of wanting to know more of where you come from and who you are is up to you. You know, it's not a, a blood degree someone can tell you on a piece of paper that tells you how much Indian you are. You know, yeah. just like my friend Phil, I just called in, you know, he's more native Indian than some of the full bloods I know, you know, just it's, it's, yeah. it's how you carry yourself, it's, it's, it's what you believe in your heart and what you want, you know, and once you start surrounding yourself with those people that kind of want the same thing and, and are interested and start making friendships and creating family members that way, then you, it'll slowly, slowly start all coming together from learning a word a day in your language to to different things like that, from where you come from to small things. That's what I do about learning my language. I, you know, try to learn a different word every day, or I, I learn through song, you know, through native songs. Like, what am I singing about? What does this mean? You know, even in different languages for some different, you know, languages. Because sometimes I sing with different drum groups at powwows that are that aren't even my my tribe. You know, they may be Ojibwe or they may be yeah. Kadata or Rikara. You know, and you learn different songs and learn how to speak language that way. But, that's so that's what I've learned mostly is through prayer and song and, and being around people that that want to know who they are and where they come from as well. So I encourage you to um, to create them friendships with, with people in your own tribe, you know, and, and, and take it upon yeah. yourself to maybe you'll teach them more, you know. Because yeah. I know friends of mine that are white and then they know they taught me history about my own culture and stuff, you know. So just don't be yeah. afraid to dive head dive head in, you know. Yeah, thank you for that advice. Um, I, I just have one more question, and it's just that your performance as Chasing Train in During I Heard It Was Me was riveting and emotional to watch. I'm sure that you felt an array of feelings while acting it as well. So what was going through your mind, and how was that whole experience with portraying such a crucial event that ignites such fierce controversy in American history? Um, as an actor, you know, you, you draw a lot of emotion from different places. But when it came to bearing my heart at Mindy D, that actually happened to my own people. And, 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 and to walk through that and, and to be, in a sense, in the same in the same situation that they were in, different things that they had gone through, it wasn't hard sometimes. It just makes you sad thinking about it, you know. And then let alone walk through these places where it's like, you know, I used to make a joke as an actor, but I don't know how many times I've died at, at Wounded Knee. You know, I've taken a shot like yeah. four different movies at Wounded Knee. And when it came to Damon Hunt at Wounded Knee, it wasn't funny anymore. You know, like I was like, this is, it wasn't funny in any of the projects I did. But, you know, I, I, it was to that point where I couldn't make a joke about it because it was real. And then you just yeah. get immersed in something like that, and you and you listen to the stories of, all, of the elders telling what happened during that time and the, and the brutal things that, that the army did to my people was was enough to make me sad. You know? Yeah. Well, thank you, Eddie, for answering well, my question. Mm -hmm. Thank you for calling in uh, and all yeah. your support. Uh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, our, our next caller, area code 661. We heard her a little bit earlier on the show. How are you doing, Fiona? Hi, boys. Hi, Eddie. How are you? Good. How are you? Now, I'm now, fine, thanks. Now, Eddie, this is the president 
of the Joseph Black Moon fan club. So, so I'm really interested to hear what Miss Fiona has for you. So uh, the floor is yours. <laughs> Right. Well, Eddie, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show because we were really hoping you would, and it's a great pleasure to have you here. So, oh, thank you. Um, okay. Um, my question is, um, I know a lot of gender actors have talked about how they have to sort of fill in um, before they do the scenes what they think is going on with their character. So I'm just wondering, what did you tell yourself? Um, before before the show, before even the pilot, as to how did Joseph get hooked up with Reverend Cole, and how did he become involved with Christianity? What what brought him from his tribe to to the situation he found himself in the in the pilot? Um, Joseph, in the beginning, he was curious on on how to bridge that gap. He knew that he was next in line to be chief, and and to bridge that gap between his people and the white people, he knew he had to figure out everything from from the way they why they dress that way, and even even to the way why they pray, and to who they pray to, and how they pray, different things like that. And then when he came into Hell on Wheels, you know, in the, and it doesn't really say how how him and the Reverend met. But we we had talked about it, you know, Tom and I, and it could be that he was, you know, he came into the Hell on Wheels searching for that way, or the Reverend found him out on, you know, out in the plains. But he came in to learn that way, and he felt the safest place to go would be the church. And so he comes into Hell on Wheels and wanting to learn this way, and then he gets turned away by his own people for for trying to to, to, to learn these new just these new ways, and, and for trying to to. To, to, to see what he can do to help his people adapt to these modern times, you know, and he gets shunned by his people from that, and he's caught in between. And and the, the reverend shows him love, and he finds a, a you know some kind of belief in the Christian, you know, in the Christian way of life, you know, and he, he believes it, and it makes sense to him, and a lot of the things make sense to him. But he can't understand why why the white people are acting like this, then, you know, and so that conflict you know, mm-hmm. shows in the series, but. Okay, well, thank you. Um, I do have one other question. Um, is there anything that you can tell us uh, behind the scenes, any kind of funny stories that happened on the set, maybe little stories, <laughs> whatever you want to say, <laughs> whatever you can share that's kosher? <laughs> um, I just... I don't know what I could share. I know uh, a lot of people have been talking about the water shooting scenes. And when I first we did the, the baptizing scene with Joseph, oh, my God. It was so cold. I remember being in there and, it, and, uh, and that water. And then you had to, before you, everybody has to go in, and then you have to let the, let the settlement settle in the water so you can use the underwater right. cameras. And so then we'd have to jump me underwater and let me sit under there for like a minute. You know, pretty much while everything cleared, I remember being so cold and having to come out and change clothes every time and get back in that water. That was one of the craziest times I remember being on set. But I, for so much of crazy times on set, uh, I don't, I'd have to think on that one, I guess. I don't really, that's one of the funnier stories, I guess, is that how everybody well, was freaking out in the water. <laughs> but, well, you know, there's a lot of the stuff that's... when I came, what's that? Uh, sorry, um, Tasha told us a story about you, you and her and Tom being on set and that you had these stone place marks or something, and you were joking around and switching stones on Tom Noonan. Did that ring a bell? Sorry, I can't hear you. Hello? Hello? Can you say yeah. that again? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, Sorry. No, just that Tasha told us a story about you switching stones that marked where you're supposed to be in a scene on time. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, we, uh, so sometimes we put down markers and for focus points and different marks on for camera. And, and, uh, and we have to remove them because, that, you know, they use color tape and whatnot, Chuck. And we have to remove them. So he, put, he had put stones there, different stones and stuff. 
And so we kept messing with him, you know, we'd go over and we'd move him in a different spot, but he is so on point and so on cue that he'd come to his spot as he's going over his lines and he'd come to the spot that he's supposed to be as he's rehearsing and he'd come and be like, this isn't right. And you'd see him kick his stone a little bit to the left and he'd kick it over a little bit and he'd go back about, you know, digesting his scene and while he wasn't looking, he'd run up there and move his stones again to a different spot. And he'd come back and be ready to do his piece, and he's like, what the hell is... Uh, he, that's how he found out it was us. But, yeah, we do little jokes like that on each other. We're on to that. Yeah. yeah, he seems like he'd probably be a really fun guy, and I really miss his character as well. But, too, uh, anyway. Really, really great to work with. That's cool. Really great to work with. So I thank you, though, Fiona, for all your support, you know, and, and for oh, you're supporting welcome. yourself in the show, and the Really means a lot to me and my family. So. Yeah, well, he's, he's a great character, and, you know, we're all really taken with him, so we really hope to see you in season uh, four. Me too. You know what? I I, I feel like it's going to happen. I have no kind of inside information or anything like that, but I just feel it in the bone. Yeah, right. well, I'll, and keep I, praying. I'll keep praying, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. They're smart. They're smart people on the show, so I, yeah. I don't think they they're gonna you know they're not gonna mess that up. Yeah. And thank and you I mean, so much, Fiona. Thank you so much, guys. Yes, thank you, Fiona. She's we been so big in helping us get yeah. the word out for the show tonight, and and every night, really, every time we do a show, she's been our one of our our biggest supporters. So thank you so Thanks, much, Fiona. Guys. Uh, much yeah. love and respect, Fiona. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eddie. All right. All right. So um, our next, we have a, a lot of callers, and we're going to try to get to everybody. So if you're on, if you're holding on, uh, don't think we're not going to get to you. We're going to get to you. Uh, we have. Let's get one more voicemail in, and then we're going to go ahead and and uh, get to the rest of the callers. Um, here we go. Uh, hi, this is uh, Carrie from California, and thanks to Ken Tay and Barbie. Eddie, I have always thought that Joseph is the most moral major character. I'm assuming that Joseph left because he was asked to eliminate the threat of his father, the Reverend. Um, he has always been put in a difficult position, so I was wondering if you thought Joseph now would go back to his family. Um, also, my fan fiction from this past season is that Joseph has been raising his child by himself. Um, but anyway, I hope to see Joseph on my screen soon. You all think you are wonderful. Thanks, and bye. All right. So uh, her fan fiction is that you are raising the child by yourself, but did uh, Joseph have a child? <laughs> no. No, no Joseph hey, didn't have a child. badass, for real. He didn't do that. <laughs> didn't waste no time. Yeah. But, uh, okay. I guess I well, thank you, Karen. About, yeah, going back to... Uh, my family. I think so. So I think that's why Joseph was even in Hell on Wheels was to to help figure out the best way to protect his family. To protect his tribe and to try to understand who these newcomers were. And it's to the point where he everything he was trying to do good and everything bridges he was creating to create this relationship between the whites and his people was getting chopped in half by his brother. His brother's going around creating all this ruckus and, and getting, you know, his tribe in trouble to the point where, you know, these soldiers are going to, the army's going to start hunting his people now. And so he makes that moral decision to, to, to kill his brother, you know. And through a lot of that, I think ultimately it was for the best of his people. So, yeah, I think he would go back to his people. Answer the question? Okay. Yeah, I think so, yeah. All right, so here we go. Uh, caller, area code 808. And uh, r- real quick before uh, caller 808, 
calls in, I'm going down from the top list, top of the list to the bottom. So there's no uh, any order. All right, so area code 808, what's your name and where are you calling from? Aloha, everybody. This is Robin from Hilo, Hawaii in the house. Whoop, whoop. Hey, aloha. Hi, Kim Tan Yardley. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Hi, Eddie. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Blessed beyond measure and happy to be on the call. So grateful that... um. I was encouraged to call in to ask questions. So far, nobody's asked this question, so I'm really happy about that. Um, season three, I don't watch TV. I actually boycotted this show because he wasn't going to be on it. But because of the love of everybody else, I got on Netflix and I watched all of season three yesterday. So oh, okay. there were so many episodes that, I could I felt it. It was like you could have written him in there. He he would have been he would have showed up right there. And I knew he wasn't on it. But you know what it did? I felt like the writers did an excellent job strategically because it kept me in my seat. I watched it to the end. And that open door for him to come back, for Joseph Blackman to come back on season four, um, just makes me want to watch it again. So I've got to just talk to the writers. And, um, yeah, Eddie, you were missed. Not just as Joseph Blackman, but on Twitter and Facebook. And I guess the question would be, and here's the extraordinary question, that landscape that you guys were shooting in, I thought it was majestic. I want to know how you felt and if you found any good picture spots there. And the place where we shot, Season one, season two is up in uh, Calgary, Alberta, and it's up in the Canadian Rockies, and it is so beautiful up there. It is, man. It is picturesque wherever you go. When we first started choosing uh, season one on the Chitina Reservation, out there in the, in the Blackfoot Reservation, just south of the city there, and uh, then it got moved out to um, um, out to an hour east of the, the city to an uh, something farms, cell farms, and it was just as beautiful out there, and, and uh, it's, it's a breathtaking, because once you're, once you're shooting and filming and out in, in the elements of everything, of you know, of Hell on Wheels and, and being out there in the mountains, the period, it, it adds a different element, you know, to the, to the series, instead of just being in a studio or, you know, things like that. I, I love being on location. You didn't have any chance to go fishing. Um, no, you didn't have any chance to go fishing. That's all I right. wish. I wish. I'm I love to fish. I know. <laughs> I'd have done that too. Thank you so much. And again, we're just waiting for the opportunity to see you before. Until oh, well, then, thank you for talking. your support. Yeah, love you. Much love. Yeah. Yeah. Aloha. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, area code four eight zero. What is your name, and where do you where are you calling from? Hello, area Hello. code four eight zero. Oh, hey. Hey. What's, what's your name, and where are you calling from? This is Teresa from Phoenix. <laughs> hey. Hey. I guess you guys don't recognize my number anymore. You know what? It's been a long day, Teresa. Don't give me up. I believe you. <laughs> it's okay. I'll talk to you later about it. Hi, Eddie. This is, a, this Hi, is our big homie. <laughs> Hi, Eddie. He's one of the she-wolves. I, yes, I am. Um, I just called um, in to say how much you are loved by the Helen Wills fan base, and I'm sure you already know that. We are always coming up with various scenarios for Joseph's character to be written back into the show. Um, but basically what I wanted to do was that as a member of the AMC Forum, I wanted to address a little wish list that certain members have, if that's okay with you. Sure. Oh, man, I want to hear this. <laughs> There's um, top five things the She-Wolves from the AMC Forum Saloon would love to see in Season 4. Number one, it's a river bathing scene. If possible, please. 
purely for historical <laughs> accuracy reasons, promise. Uh, second would be baby oil to be somehow worked into a scene when Joseph is shirtless. And three, <laughs> three, if you could please bite your lip, lower lip again. One. <laughs> and four would be a little corset ripping with Ruth for old time's sake. I'm sure they can work that in. And personally, I would just like to see you save Colin from the Mormon fort, which I think would be an ideal way for you, for you to come back, actually. Yes, that is a good idea. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing those. <laughs> yeah, if you can just throw those ideas out to the writers, we would really appreciate it. No, I don't you, you know, Eddie sure is what... not a piece of meat, by the way. <laughs> I know he's not a piece of meat, but the women love him. I love him. I'm just serving as an ambassador for the girls tonight, okay? Well, thank okay. you for serving as an ambassador. <laughs> good night, guys. Good night. Thank you so much, Teresa, for that uh, wish list. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Bye. Hey, Eddie. Hey, yo. Basically, they want you to save Helen, rescue Elam, all while feeding a baby riding side saddle on a scallion. <laughs> while biting my lips. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to do everything. Oh, I'm in here crying. <laughs> oh man, oh man, yeah, yeah, they got a lot of faith in uh, the, uh, Mr. Black Moon. Yeah, I know. The, the yeah, mighty hero. Yeah, ever goes to AMC Forum, please enter at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, I guess you can get Ruth, Ruth um you can get Rose from Dickle and Pool along your way uh to doing all that other stuff as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's right, up, Melly Mel? Oh yeah, Melly, do, do we have anything? Do we have anything? Uh no, basically all the questions are coming through the phone calls and everybody's having their little comments about what's being discussed in the podcast, so oh, okay. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, so caller Airy code nine one four. What's your name and where are you calling from? This is um, Vanessa, and I'm calling from the Bronx. How are you guys? Hey, Vanessa from the Bronx. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey. Um. First of all, thank you guys for doing this. This is so appreciated. It's not even like funny. I appreciate it so much that you're doing this right now. Um, All right. I just had a question for Eddie, and that is, what would be your dream storyline for Joseph um, if he did come back next season? Like, what, how would you write the script, basically? I'd like Joseph to come back as part of a, like, a gunslinger, like part of a gang, you know, that comes to end up roughing around, you know, that either Colin ends up running into. Or maybe even he gets hemmed up or where where Bohannon goes to prison for something finally. And while he's in prison, he's getting beat up and harassed. And then when it seems like he's about to be on his deathbed or gets in a fight, Joseph saves him. Also, Joseph comes out of the black shadows of the prison and is in there for some crazy reason. Then they get out together and, and go on their crazy adventures together or something, you know? Okay. Well, that sounds like something I would like. All right. Um, and also, I just wanted to say um, that once again, thanks for doing this, and shout out to um, Fiona and Elizabeth. I just wanted to get their name out there. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you, Vanessa. Not a problem. Um, keep doing what you do. We love you. We always will support you, no matter what you do. So. Um, oh, love and respect. Thank you. Okay. And, and people are in the chat room. Uh, Sarah says that uh, Vanessa, that she's a big fan of your art. Absolutely, I am. Always have been since Black Cloud, since like 2007. Been a great big fan. So. <laughs> um, well, much love, Vanessa. Thank you very much. Not a problem. All right. Have All a right. great night, guys. All right now. Bye. All right. It's from the Bronx, birthplace of hip hop. Yeah, every chance yeah, I get, yeah. I'll throw in some hip hop references. All right, so area code four two three. What is your name and where are you calling from? 
My name is Joe, and I'm calling from East Tennessee. Hey, Joe from Tennessee. East Tennessee. What's up, Joe? Oh, not a whole lot. Just sitting here listening to everything. My question for Eddie is everything's been asked so far pretty much covered about Hell on Wheel. My issue is we need a Native American channel on DirecTV. Who do we picket, uh, kidnap, beat up to get this to happen? That's a good question. Um, me? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not. You know, that's I've always been one of the dream of mine too, to have a have a native oriented station, not necessarily always cultural stuff, you know, but that would help <clears throat> promote, you know, different, you know, artists from music to acting to anything. You know, just exactly. to help use that. You have to use it as a vehicle, you know, and how the African Americans have BET, you know, and to have that same aspect for for natives. You know, that's a, that's a great exactly. idea. But um, yeah, you know, I always totally thought right. that uh, it, it would be great for one of the big casinos to spearhead that idea, like the Mohican Sun or the Chiquats, maybe, or maybe A and C. No, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of it's, it's a good idea. You know, to I'll just you know, I'll just keep pounding people, maybe knocking door to door online or something. But you know, I'm really close to Cherokee, North Carolina, the casinos. Everything is great, but I just want to say what you and your brother Michael bring to every role that you play is passion and education, and that's very important uh, today. It really is, and I hope you guys continue doing that. Well, thank you, Joe. Thank you for your support, and that's a great idea. And I hope you, uh, I hope that 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 comes to uh, life someday. That would be beautiful. Well, Eddie, you have a great evening, and thank you so much. You too, Joe. Okay. Right. Thank you, Goodbye. Joe. Thank you. All right. So we have, uh, we call him Doctor Phil on the line. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing well. How y'all doing? Excellent, man. Good. So what, what do you have for Miss Spears? Well, Eddie, um, I was uh, I was looking you up online a couple of weeks ago, and I noticed that you were doing some work on We the People, and uh-huh. I was just wondering if you could shed a little light on that, what it's all about, and and what it entailed, and what your role was in it. We the People is um, it's a docu drama movie about the history of everything that's happened in the United States. And it's narrated by Morgan Freeman and Kenny Rogers. And then I had a couple little uh, narration in there, doing some quotes and quoting some chiefs in We the People. And it basically is a movie that's going to, it's already out. I think a lot of you guys can look it up at wethepeoplethemovie.com. And it's, uh, some of it's already out in theater. Um, some of it's actually going to be integrated in the curriculum of schools where kids will be able to watch. You know, it's basically having a movie about your history book becoming a movie. And um, it, it's been 10 years in the making, and they're recreating um, a lot of the different actual battle scenes and the different things that happened, and they're putting it into a visual piece. that can come on IMAX theaters and uh, a lot of regular theaters as well. So oh, I'm excited right for it. Really I can't wait to see it. That's right up my alley. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, it is, man. It's, I'm honored to be a part of it. You know? Yeah. Well, I am part of Team 82 and our Team Joseph Black Moon, and I would really like to see it back on the show, especially now uh, that, exactly. especially now that yeah. Cullen is a non-option for Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So it would be great to see you back. Oh, All right, you. thanks a lot. I'll let you get back to it. All right, have a good night, Phil. All right, thank you, Dr. Phil. All right. Bye. All right. All right. Our next caller, area code 403. What's your name and where are you calling from? Gene Braybrock, Calgary, Alberta. Say that one more time. Gene Braybrock from Calgary, Alberta. Gene! What's up, brother? What's going on, Eddie? How are you doing, man? It's good to hear your voice, brother. Everybody, this is my good friend, Gene Braverock. He uh, he worked on the show as well. He did a lot of stunts and a lot of uh, some of the acting. 
you know, and um, it's good to hear your voice, brother. How you been? I'm doing good, man. Living like it wasn't. This summer wasn't the same without you, bro. Just wanted to say, uh, all the friends out here, we all miss you, and uh, we all uh, thinking about you. Oh, thanks, Wonder bro. I miss you guys a lot too, man. It was heartbroken when you just come up this last season, but I, yeah, man, I think about you guys all the time. You're always in my prayers, and and um, yeah, man, I just miss you guys. I'll have to get uh, have to get your numbers again from after the show. We'll have to make contact. All right, okay, I'll be doing videos. Sure, sounds great, brother. All right, man. It was good to hear from you, bro. All right. Thank you, Gene. All right. So uh, our next caller, area code 360. What's your name and where are you calling from? Oh, it's Valerie Harris again from the Howies and more. And I'm calling from Washington State. How are you hey, doing, Gene? Hi, Valerie. How are you doing, Valerie? Oh, I'm doing well. How are you, Eddie? Good. How can are you surviving all this love? Is it washing all over you? <laughs> yes. It feels great. To <laughs> Whenever you love. start feeling down, you can play this over and over again and you'll you know, just bask in all of this love and attention and glory and all that. But <laughs> yes. I'm gonna be one I'm gonna be one that says, you know, if if you come back and show us, stay away from Ruth. Stay away from Earth. There's no good for you. <laughs> the anti-root, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's we, just, we don't yeah. endorse that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, yeah. you know, i I got to tell you, there's something about the way you bring um, Joseph out that, you know, I, I saw Lincoln, and you know how Daniel Day Lewis, when you're watching Lincoln, by the time you're done, you feel like, you feel Lincoln. You know him. He's his friend. You know that man. And mm-hmm. that's what you do with Joseph. I know Joseph. I, I know him. You know, he's like a friend. I, I have no doubt of who he is. And you have that ability to make Joseph knowable. I know Joseph, you know. There's no doubt in my mind who he is or, or what he's going to do or who, who he's like mm-hmm. and, and what he's going to like. And that's such a gift. Uh, to make oh, him thank come you. alive like that, and uh, I, I just—it just amazes me because you can't always capture a character like that, you know. And I, I just—it's it's just amazing that you do that. And so I think that's why everybody wants Joseph back so much because, you, you know, you, you feel him. He's—he's he's necessary to that show. You—you you just have to have those characters you feel like, like Kim and Eva. You know, mm-hmm. they're very much a, a core part of that show. And, um, you know, he's just so missed. There's such a big void without him there. And there's so many ways to bring him back. It's, it's just, you know, it's like they left so many open doors and so many ways to bring him back. So um, just know we all love you and that you will always have fans forever and ever and ever. Okay? Oh, thank you, Valerie. <laughs> You're welcome, and thanks for doing this and taking our calls and uh, all that stuff. So take care. All right, much love, Bobby. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Thanks for calling. Hey, you know what? We're gonna um, yeah, there's a couple of um people Eddie um on Facebook that left some posts, so I'm gonna fire them off to you. Um, this first message is from. Leanne Stanley, she said, love you, Eddie Spears. Thanks for being a positive role model in our society for Indian country. May our kind creator continue to bless you with your wants and needs. Love, peace, and most of all, happiness and good health. Keep up the awesome work. Much love and respect from Rocky Boy, Montana. That's Leanne Marie Stanley, Cree Nation. All right. Well, thank you very much, Leanne. Much love and respect to you, too. And we and we have one, uh, who, um, one from Nadja Wondert. Uh She's from Switzerland. She says, Switzerland loves Joseph Black Moon and Eddie Spears. So great that you're on Talking Hell on Wheels tonight. Uh, she's excited to hear about your new endeavors. And she said she just got back from the Lakota lands 
uh, Pine Ridge, Black Hills, and thanks for being a role model and motivator for the kids there. And all, yes, I'm very, uh, I'm very happy to be a part of it. There's a thing that um, I'd like to throw in there real quick. It's Spears Brothers Stands. Dot com. You can go online for that. But there's a, um, I have a piece on there called the Giving Tree, and it's um, kind of challenging fans to help support different um, different things that are going on in the reservation, the different things that the youth need, like um, helping out with computers or helping out with things like that. And right now we're um, supporting the Lakota Five, and they're a group of marathon runners who are going to run in the in the New York Marathon to help raise funds um, to build a youth center in Allen, in Allen, the Allen Youth Center. And I'd like to give a shout out to them and, and um, you know, and, and give them a praise for what they're doing as well to uh, Kelsey Goodlance, the Newport White Bloom, um, Jeffrey Turning Hart Jr., Alex Wilson, and Amanda Carlo. And um, I encourage you guys to follow them online and support any way you can. You can go to spiritbrothersfans.com, the Giving Tree, and, um, and anything and everything helps, you know, anything we do to help inspire our youth and to help, you know, create these centers where kids can come and, and feel at home and, and, and feel warm and use computers and get them in touch with technology and, and you know, and help them have a space where they can help them grow and, to, uh, and, and, and express themselves. So I, I'd like to thank you guys for giving me a chance to put that on the show. But I'm just like oh, to, uh, yeah. Oh, no problem. No, no problem. Um, we have another uh, message from Facebook, and there's also an email, but I'm going to read the next Facebook uh, message to you. Um, this was from Iris Kessler. Uh, she says she misses you on Hello, Wheels, Eddie. The show's not been the same without you. Uh, Joseph was a big part of the show for me. Please come back to season four. It has not been the same without you and Lily gone. As far as she's concerned, they lost two of their best. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would wow. definitely, um, she, she definitely wants you back on the show. <laughs> well, I thank her for her support. <laughs> and, um, All right. Your, and the email, and real quickly, um, in the email, um, you have a message from France, actually worldwide. <laughs> um, yeah. Hello, Andy. Her name, her name is Magali. Um, and she was basically saying that um, uh, there's a small message to you to say that. Um, she likes the work that she does, and that when you say that people must believe in themselves that anything is possible, uh, that's a real big inspiration to her. And um, she says, take care, and she loves you. And uh, she drew a bunch of kisses. <laughs> All right, Madali. Well, thank you. Much love back to you, Madali. And uh, I encourage you to keep watching the show, and, you know, it's, uh, and thank you for all your support. All right. All right, so we have another caller. Caller, area code 409. What is your name and where are you calling from? Hey, this is Catherine from Hell on Wheels and Then Some. How are you guys doing? Hey, we're doing Excellent. Right. Hey, before you start, Catherine, uh, I just want to also say that Catherine's group has been a big supporter of this show, and she is a great uh, Hell on Wheels fan and, you know, just a great all-around person, and her group is awesome. You know, there's a lot of great groups out there, and she is the uh, the CEO of <laughs> one of the, uh, the the better groups out there. So I just want to give the Helen Will and, and then some group a lot of love. So go ahead. Thank you. And we love Eddie Spears. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, you Eddie, for doing the show. It's so nice to talk to you. Uh, I'm so honored to talk to you and all the fans. It means a lot to me, man. And I'm sitting here smiling ear to ear. Uh, we missed you a lot. You've heard that already, but we really mean it. And anytime you're on Facebook, you're more than welcome to come be part of our group. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had a question about um, Joseph's character. To me, the first two seasons, he seemed really like the more mature person to me. He had to make the really hardcore choices, like mm-hmm. um, to put his brother away and then to be his spiritual father. It seemed like they always put all the heavy choices on him, and he always stepped up to do what he had to do. How did you feel about him having to make those choices? Well, it's tough. You know, he was put between a rock and a hard spot. A lot of 
I was kind of having to weigh things out to the point of, you know, if it's either I can be selfish and, and, and go on and be that way, or he could, you know, try to do the, the best of what he thinks that would kind of benefit every, all aspects of his family, from his new Catholic family to his tribe, you know. And it was a tough decision for him, a lot of the choices he had to make, but it made him a stronger person, and, and it, you know, created a lot of controversy, you know. Right. I I liked it. I loved the depth of that character because it was more so to me like he was um, a spiritual warrior or fighting internal battles instead yes. of just being the stereotypical go to battle Native American. Mhm. Yes. So there was we, a lot of influences on on the way he conducted himself. You know, a lot of influence on from his spiritual side and from from both worlds, from the Christian side to his Native spirituality. You know. And it was a hard battle for Joseph, and it still is. You know. Right. And we, we think AMC would be not so smart to leave him out next season. <laughs> but oh, that's a bad you, choice on their part. <laughs> we're, we're definitely pulling to see him again, and we definitely appreciate you. I love hearing your voice, and you got such a nice sense of humor, too. <laughs> well, thanks, Catherine. All right. I'm glad I got to talk to you. You guys have a good night. All right, thank you, Kat. All right, bye. All right. Once again, that's uh, Catherine from the Hello Wills and then some uh, group. All right, so um, uh, before we uh, continue, um, you know, they talked about, um, you, you talked briefly about your brother Michael. Uh, just, you know, uh, just talk about what an influence he's been on your career, because I believe he's older, right? Yeah, he's my older brother, you know. And I love him. The and other half, alive. Pierce brother, it, Yeah, he's uh, you know, he's always been an inspiration my whole life. From his first movie was Dances with Wolves, you know, and uh, and so he was doing some couple films every year after that, and they, you know, watching him go down that path was was interesting and it intrigued me, you know, and I they called him for a role. Um, for a TNT movie called Geronimo, and he was too big for the role. And so my father asked if I wanted to audition. I said, yeah, and I jumped at the role, and, you know, I the opportunity and, and auditioned for it and um, and got the part. You know, it was one of the things that, you know, I auditioned. The first role I ever auditioned for, I, I got because I was so in love with this, you know, with acting and intrigued by the dip by the bug. And so it actually came out on film, and they showed it to my whole entire elementary school. And they uh, had this scene where I go through, and, I, and Geronimo comes back drunk, and he's trying to get in the wigwam. And I come out with a gun, and, and they say, bullets can't kill him. And I'm like, okay, well, so I go up to him, and he beats me up, and, rips, and I go through, and I rip up my garden and all this stuff, and I commit suicide. I'm a fourth grader, and everybody in the school is looking at me like, what the heck? And so <laughs> after, that, <laughs> after that, my friends never let me put it down either. But every time I get mad, they'd be like, I'll rip up your garden, you know. <laughs> so it was, it was different. But, you know, and my brother Michael is, I pay a lot of tribute to him, you know, because he, from the, the native way of life, from teaching me how to sing to, to always being a great, you know, older brother and having – a good, you know, and then having a good best friend to run to go around with to do these events with is another thing too. Because people think that you know you do movies that it's red carpet and glamour all the time, and it's not. You know, you go to your set, back to your hotel room by your damn self. You know, and it's in a lot of not a long time, a lot of downtime. So having my brother around and sharing the same love for acting and, and going around doing inspirational speaking to the youth and stuff is just a bonus and a plus, man. And you know, he's working out in Virginia right now. And, Miss him, and we're going to go up to uh, Spirit Lake this weekend and have a youth conference up there in Spirit Lake. So I'm very excited to see him again. It's been a couple weeks, you know, and he's my, one of my, he's my best friend. And, uh, yeah, man, he's my great older brother. So I'm going to give a shout-out to him. He's listening. Love you, bro. Miss you. And can't wait to see you. All right. All right. Are you guys going to ever uh, do a movie together where maybe it'd be two brothers, they, they rob a bank of some craziness, you know, something like that? Yeah, we thought about it. You know, we've, we've, we've went over a lot of scenarios and a lot of different ideas. And uh, hopefully one day they'll, they'll come true. You know, we got to do uh, the last movie that we got to do together was Guns, Girls, and Gambling. 
and uh, it was a movie I did before I shot Helen. It's actually the last movie I did with my long hair, and uh, we got to bully Christian Slater around a little bit. It was pretty fun. You actually get to do a you get to do a movie with your brother, you know. So it was cool. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So um, now, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I'm being told that men's girls and gambling. You can uh, get that on Netflix. It's available yep. on ne- Netflix. So mm-hmm. thank you, thank you for that uh, that information that was just uh, passed along to me. Uh, all right. So um. What is uh, what is the next move for uh, Eddie Spears? Now, yeah, you mentioned that he, your brother taught you singing. So, uh, you, you know, are you going to release an album, possibly? Yeah, well, yes, it's um, we have a drum group called Bear Canyon that we just started uh-huh. this past year, and we've done two recordings so far, but the CD isn't finalized yet. We're still um, going through tracks and and things like that. But yes, this next year, 2014, there will be a CD out by Barry Canyon that features uh, the Spears Brothers and along as well as uh, eight other gentlemen on there. That way, that's like, that formed the group. And that's native style singing, you know, that, that's for powwows. And, uh, so those types the celebrations and there's a song for everything. And, you know, and then that led into, you know, spiritual songs that we do in ceremony and, and all that, you know. So, so, yeah, I'm excited about it, man. Time. Everybody, the fans can look forward to uh, Gary Canyon coming out in 2014. You know, you worked with Common, so, you know, you know, a little hip-hop, a little native singing, you know? Yeah, man. Right. Oh, we had some good time. My work? Me and Common, you know, hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> the private shoes, you, you know. Did you ever battle rap him? Freestyling oh, going on. We never necessarily battle rap, but we, you know. We have a few good times, tell some good stories, and put a few good raps in there. Yeah, so that's a good, that's fun up there, man. You know, I, I miss all the Hell on Wheels crew and, and the cast. You know, everybody was a tight knit family, and you know, so it's uh, it was fun, man. I look forward to doing it again. You know. Oh yeah, and you know what? You've got to promise us now. If there's a season four and you get recast, you have to come back on the show to spike the football. Oh yeah, sure, my friend. <laughs> oh, it's happening. Oh yeah, it is happening. It's happening. It's happening. Yeah. All right, so go ahead, uh, Yardley. <laughs> oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. I, I made sure I had to get that in there because if, if I didn't, if I didn't formally invite him back, you know we'd feel the wrath. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, I'll come back on the show and do it. Do the end, end zone dance, definitely. <laughs> All right. All right, now we with a little bit of twerking. <laughs> that was a little twerking. <laughs> we come to the point of the show. We we come to the point of the show that we affectionately call rapid fire, and basically what rapid fire is is where where me and Yardley pepper you with a lot of questions, not maybe necessarily about the business or acting or such or even Hell on Wheels, but just a way for people to get a better idea of who you are as a person. Uh, we're not going to get too in depth. We're not going to ask you about your fifth grade girlfriend or anything like that. But uh, uh-huh. this should be fun and and relatively painless. So, uh, uh-huh. um, all right. So uh, I, I, we always start the question off, I mean, uh, the segment off with last year uh, they had a hologram concert of Tupac at Coachella. What dead musician or band would you like to see a hologram concert of? Um, see, that's a good one. I have to say, I don't know. It's between Stevie Ray Vaughan and Sublime. I probably have to say Bradley Sublime. Newell. Sublime, oh, yeah. If okay. Bradley Newell was still alive, I'd like to see. I like his music. And I also like a lot of blues, you know, and rock and roll. And, and Tupac would be the one, you know, for hip-hop, Tupac and Biggie. And then for blues, it'd probably be Stevie Ray Vaughan. For rock and roll, it'd probably be maybe Skinner or, or what? Jack Fogarty's still alive, but the original Creedence would be rocking. And, you know, okay. and then I suppose for folk or whatever, you know, you'd always, I don't know, maybe a little Jerry Garcia. I, I would always want to see the Grateful Dead if they were ever around. You know. oh, oh, okay. Well, you know, we all know that you're, you're an outdoorsman. Um, if you could hunt 
anywhere in the world, where would it be? Montana. I'd have to say, I have to say Montana because I don't, you know, but I would, what I hunt for is, is all right here, you know, and it's beautiful uh, in Montana, and, and I don't know any other animals that would ever, you know, so I'm not really uh, a horn hunter, as you would say, trophy hunter. I'm just hunt for, for if I need meat and if my family needs meat, you know, I, that's the only reason why I would ever take a life, but it's, if I had to find an abundant place where I would need to go hunt, it would be Montana. Oh, okay. okay. Montana, all right. Uh, all right, so uh, what is your, your favorite guilty pleasure junk food? Oh, man, I'm kind of a... I don't know if... Mine's pop, dude. Like, I, I, like, I like to drink a Pepsi all day every day. I drink pop and chips, you know, but I'm a jerky man. I don't know if anybody likes beef jerky. I don't know if I could. I don't consider that a junk food. Sometimes you know, but I, if I ever go into a go to the store, that's the first thing I grab. And when I'm getting when I'm getting gas or in the grocery in the grocery store, it's always jerky, jerky and a pop. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, what what's more fascinating to you, a full moon or a lunar eclipse? Um, full moon. I, I agree. Which <laughs> What, what, what was your your first uh, car that you owned? What was my first what? Uh, first car that you owned. First car that I oh first car that I owned oh a little beautiful Saber. Oh, okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Here. Well, old grandma cars back in the junior high. The ninth, the ninth grader. Bought a beautiful Saber. <laughs> my first car about no money. <laughs> okay, um, like we had cars like we don't know my parents got us cars, you know, but the cars I actually bought with my money that I earned my very first car with a Buick was saving. Oh, cool. Um, uh, what would your last meal be? My <laughs> last meal? Have you been executed? Yeah, have you been executed? <laughs> That's what my last meal was. Yeah, no, what, what, what would your last meal be? Oh, if you oh were about I got uh, a steak. A good, a good <laughs> flame in your Do my last meal. Flame in your hand. Just me. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, what, what place outside of the this United States would you like to go visit that you haven't been to? Um. I want to go to Bora Bora. Bora Bora, okay. I like that. Oh, that's cool. Hey, what Hey, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? Favorite cartoon growing up? It's probably... Um, G.I. Joe. Oh, well, you want a little Duke and Sergeant Slaughter up in there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. If, if you could play any Native American uh, legendary hero, who would you want to play? You got, you got to name one. I know there's a million of them. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, crazy Horse. All right, Crazy Horse. Darling? Actually, you broke up a little bit. Could you repeat that, Eddie? Oh, I said Crazy Horse? Oh, okay. Crazy Horse? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, hey, I've got one uh, one for you. Um, since you've had a career in um, TV and in the movies, uh, what's your personal favorite movie? That I've done? Oh, uh, yeah, in general. Personal, general, personal favorite? favorite? Yeah, your personal favorite. Yeah, I like that. And it can definitely be something, you know. Oh, okay. You know, I've always, it's always been one of my favorites, Young Gun. Oh, yeah, Young Gun. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, don't, see, I'll start quoting lines from that. <laughs> don't you know, I, I like the writing of John Fusco. He does a lot of good stuff, you know. 
I'm to the right of Young Gun. He, he does, and only that's it, because I, you know, I know he did Dreamkeeper, but he did, he, you know, he did like Young Guns, did Forbidden Kingdom, he's done Thunderheart, he's done a lot of, uh, a lot of pieces that I like, you know, and he was one of my inspirations, you know, I think he gave me a lot of good insight when I did, when we did Dreamkeeper together. So he was always one of my, my good mentors that I was looked up to, so I always liked his writing. Even before I knew him, you know, Young Guns was always, I was going around pretending I was uh, Lou Diamond Phillips, you know, when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always think of that yeah. peyote thing. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you see the size of that chicken? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that shows off. Now, now this is this is a question that everyone loves it when I ask it. So, and I can't, I'd be shot up if I don't ask you this. You are from South Dakota, right? Yep. All right, so if me or Yardley was on a date in South Dakota and we were trying to figure out, you know, places to take a young lady, uh, give us the idea of places that we, we could take a young lady to have, like, a really cool date. In South Dakota. In South Dakota. You can uh, go out to the Black Hills and go out to the, the Needles Highway and go out to Sylvan Lake. It's a beautiful drive out there, but then you can go to Top of Learning Peak, have dinner, have dinner up there, and then go down and experience some of the nightlife and wrap it somewhere. All right, ladies, now you heard yeah. it. If you guys were fortunate enough to get a date with uh, Mr. Spears, that was <laughs> what you get. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. But you buy, though. You buy. <laughs> you go in Dutch. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, all right. Um, let's do a quick chat room shout out. Uh, we have Ashley, we have Country Cottage, we have Debbie, we have Catherine, uh, we have uh, Lauren Brandt, Nancy Bowen, uh, MJ Weaver, we have Robin, we have Teresa, we have Tiffy, we have Trisha Woods, we have XYZ4, of course, we have Yardley, and we have uh, one other person who's in there as Talking Hill, something or other. <laughs> so thank you for all of the people that are logged into the chat room and all the people uh that are logged in who are logged in via as guests. Um and yeah, people man. are listening. So I'd like to thank everybody too. Tuning in for the show and giving me all this you know, respect and love and you know, and all the support. You know, I'd like to give a big shout out to all my fans and all the Helen Wheel fans and everybody that's you know, fans of this show. A big thank you to you, man. Cynthia Yardley, that's, you know, it's been a fun time chatting with you guys. You know, and and uh, right. I'd like to give a big thank you, you know, out to Elizabeth, Jenny Sachs, and all my family, the Dupree family, you know, everybody's got big support. And uh, I'd just like to throw that out there. Thank you, everybody, for all your support. Yes, and oh, we have yeah. one question from the chat room I want to really quickly get in there by XYZ4. Please ask Eddie, what was it like working with the Jayton Brothers? Uh, the Jayton Brothers are brilliant, man. You know, this was their baby. And uh, I always loved how, how involved they were, even though they were so busy writing the show and, and dealing with different aspects of, of writing and all this different stuff. They still took the time to sit down and, and be like, well, where would you see Joseph going? And you know, what about this? And we had this idea and that idea, you know, and... And they're always so crazy, you know, and then you get them doing a scene and they would be like, oh, it's so awesome to watch it come to life. You know, you, you and, like, they were, one time there was a scene where I'm trying to uh, ask my father to come to town to meet with these, meet with the, with the, the four horsemen, as they say, you know. And, and during that scene, it was such an emotional scene and everybody was, you know, pouring it all out and, to the point where Marvin Rush even come up and grab the camera and was filming himself and and the writers were right in there and after we got done it was everybody started applauding and, and the Gaten brothers come out and they were just so supportive and so happy and tears in their eyes being like, you know, it's different when you see it on the page and see see everything on the script and you're writing this stuff, but when you actually 
you can see it come to life through you actors and be thank you, you know. And so I'd like to thank them for for really um, getting involved, especially in being Native and, and having them show that they actually care about the Native aspect, you know, even though it is entertainment, you know, and there's still some things you have to, to, to deal with. But I'd like to thank them for their for their love and support through the whole show. You know, they're amazing writers. All right. And, uh, you know, I thank, yeah, thank them because they are the creators of the, of the show. So uh, big uh, thank you to them. And, uh, Yardley, uh, uh, do we have anything before we say goodbye tonight? Oh, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Eddie, for coming on. And, and we definitely um, have our arms open any time that you want to come on the show, promote anything that you're doing, uh, let the fans know. Anything that you're doing, um, we had such a wonderful time talking to you. And just and regardless, uh, it would be awesome if you could come back on because um, you've got such a following. Uh, we're big fans, and uh, the Hello and Wills community are big fans. And let me tell you something. I'm actually going to start something on our Facebook page, and we're going to keep forwarding it to AMC and all the writers, uh, our Joseph Black Moon Come Back campaign. So we'll let you pick today. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll let you pick today. We'll, which it should we do it on the first, the fifteenth, or the thirty, or like the thirtieth every month? Do uh fifteenth, huh? Okay. All right. Right in the All right, right in the middle. We we got your back. All right. All right, man. Uh, real quick, Jarvis, you know, thanks for all your the warm words and for uh, for inviting me on the show. You know. And cool, and, and real, and really cool. And real quick, thank, you, thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, uh, Fiona. Thank you, of course, Melanie Yardley. Um, all the fans that are listening. And uh, this this Saturday, we'll be joined by James Shanklin, who played uh, Aaron Hatch uh, on uh, Hell on Wheels. So please uh, make sure you guys check it out. 8 p.m. Pacific, uh, 11 Eastern. And uh, we will see you guys. Uh, on Saturday with another episode of Talking Hell on Wheels. Goodbye.